Hi everyone, this is Brandon with Recast Software, and in this video I'm going to show you how to go through the initial configuration for Recast Management Server right after installing. So, uh, the first thing you want to do is open up a modern browser like Edge or Chrome, open up an incognito browser page. This will make it so that um, you're prompted for your credentials, just in case there's credentials that are already cached. So, here's my Recast Management Server URL. I'm logging in with the credentials that were used to complete the initial installation. If I go to administration and then permissions, the first thing you want to do is add yourself if you haven't already. So um, this will be your AD name. You can add wildcard to the front and back if needed. If you're having trouble finding your account, add users. Right after adding, you'll want to click on the pen and paper to edit. Give yourself an administrator's role. This will make it so you're not limited from a right click tools perspective at all. Um, under recast roles, this is where you'd create a, a custom role if you wanted. So just really quickly, if I wanted to make a role for help desk, what I'd do is I'd go into permissions and then I would select the actions that I wanted them to be able to complete, um, which in turn will either allow them to run the actions or it'll grade them out in right click tools if they're assigned that role. So it can be really helpful for elevating permissions and limiting permissions. But um, the next thing I'll do, since I installed a proxy, if you didn't install a proxy, you can skip this step. Um, it's just verify that the proxy that you installed is showing is connected and authorized. So here's the service account name that I used and the machine name that it was installed on. So that looks good, connected and authorized. We'll go to routes. I'm going to create a route for my service account. So we'll select the service account name. We'll give it a role of administrators because I don't want to limit it. And we'll give it a scope of all. I'm going to leave it at the bottom. Um, the way that routing works in Recast Management Server is basically it's just a priority system. Whatever's at the top, the highest route type is going to be what is it attempted first. So if I run a right-click tools action, it's going to check to see if an agent is installed on the machine. If it is, it'll attempt to run the action using the agent, which is a system account. If not, it'll attempt to use whatever credentials are logged into the configuration manager console. So this is kind of a catch-all because there's always going to be someone logged into the console. Um, and the service account being below the right-click tools route can still be leveraged for everything else, so like populating scopes and web dashboards. But we'll click Save. We'll go to Scopes. And scopes is basically just like pulling information for to use uh, alongside right click tools. So we're going to create a scope for my Active Directory domain. So the name doesn't matter, just so you know that it's for your Active Directory domain. That's my domain. I'll create another scope for my config manager site. And this slider here is how often it repopulates. It's minutes, so every two hours, 120 minutes. Config manager site. This will be your site code. And then the SMS provider, which is likely your primary server name. And what we're looking for is populated to switch to true. If you have lots of machines, it can take a little while, but populated just means that it was able to success successfully pull in that information. So that looks good. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll go to settings. So settings, 80 domains. We'll add our AD domain here as well. MEM CM sites, and we'll add our CM site. This will be the SMS provider, so the server name. Then the site code. Okay, they're both added. We'll go to settings, and the first thing you'll want to do is add your SQL database name here for your configuration manager server. So plugin name value, we're going to add the value for the SQL database. So 
Um, like, like I was saying earlier, um, nine times out of 10, it's going to be CM underscore site code for my lab. This is my, my database name. And then the SQL server. Cool. So I've got both of those added. Um, most of the other things will kind of vary on your organization. I'll touch on some of the more important things here quick. Um, by default, the global settings max audit log age, all zeros means that the audit log is going to be um, saved indefinitely. If you wanted it to um, not be that way, like for example, if you wanted to only hold on to that audit log information for 30 days, you do 30 for days, hours, minutes, seconds, and you can do the same thing for the max snapshot age. If you'd like, like if your SQL storage is something you're concerned about, it's probably good to set up these values. Um, if you have MBAM, this is where you'd add that administration URI, as well as the um, the SQL server down here. So your MBAM SQL server. Um, if you use service down your environments, you'd add that instance URL here. And these two by default, so recast agent approval one means that it's going to improve any, it's going to approve any agents automatically that are in a, in a trusted domain. Um, so the same setting goes for the proxy. And most of the time, that's, that's what you want, especially if you have thousands of agents. Otherwise, you'd have to manually go through and, and approve them, which can be kind of a pain. But um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we can talk a little bit about um, web dashboards here. If we go to dashboards, we can see the AD cleanup, which is um, going to be just like the dashboard that's available in the Right Click Tools console extension. So just to kind of show you what trends look like since we've added our domain in our MEMCM site, um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a um, computer's OU and we'll compare it to uh, all systems collection. Um, you'll probably use a different combination for your OU and collection, but basically you're just making a uh, comparison where the OU and the collection should have the same information, which gives you outliers to kind of investigate why that is. But um, we'll minimize these. We'll populate the scope. Sorry, we'll populate the information here. Gives you not, uh, a pie chart that you can quickly see what's in both, what's in Configuration Manager. Um, and the way that you would create a trend for this. So if you wanted the same snapshot on a, on a schedule to kind of track how things are looking, you click this, this icon here, the arrow that's turning upward. Um, clean up. You give it a name so you, you'd know what the comparison is for. And then you'd set the snapshot, uh, the snapshot schedule here. So um, by default, it's going to be taking taken at 1 a.m., um, you can set the days that it's taken and the intervals. So the more often you take it, the more accurate your data is going to be, but it'll take it more space. So most people do a week in between to kind of see how things are going. But um, we'll create the trends. If we go to trends, we won't see anything yet. But every week there will be a new dot added to this graph here that you can click on the snapshot and look at that moment in time. So super helpful for things like compliance and really all of them are helpful, but good to know that that's there. But yeah, as far as basic setting goes, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.